Good morning, everyone. I'm going to turn things over to the pastor now. Welcome, everyone. What number is this? 15. This is our 15th service uh, via technology. You are now tuned in to the Southeastern Duchess Cooperative Parish. It's the third Sunday after Pentecost, and we are celebrating Father's Day as well as our Sunday school um, and our graduate uh, program. So we hope you enjoy it. We'll see a lot of our uh, children on today, which will be a um, very, very nice change. Um, for our announcements, um, June 23, which is this Tuesday night, we have our um, parish council meeting. Everyone is invited to tune in on Zoom. It's our second meeting where we will be discussing all our reopening plans and get a report from our four teams that have been set up in order for our churches to actually open up for service in our sanctuaries. Our health ministry meeting is at 6.30, and your church family is here uh, for you in any way that they are able to help. That if you need meals, groceries, transportation, um, we continue to provide Wednesday evening meals delivered and you can contact them. Uh, for those of you who are on the Zoom meeting, these are the announcements which were um, attached to your invitation. But it's S-D-U-M-C, help ministry at gmail.com. That will come up again at the uh, end of our service. Midnight Run, even though we are not going down to the city, they have a list of items that are needed, mostly t-shirts, underwear, and the smaller hotel size uh, toiletries. And those can be um, donated actually even when the people come to deliver your meals or dropped off at Poquag uh, out there, but those will still be needed. Um, so now let us begin our Father's Day and Sunday School Recognition Day service by hearing a prelude from Keegan Lewick on the piano, How Great Thou Art. Thank you, Keegan. We're going to go on to the next part of the service, which is the opening prayer with Abby Lewick. She's going to do the call to worship. In a day when so many men are absent, we cherish the love of our fathers. Thank God for fathers who comfort Courage. <laughs> Thank God for fathers who build character and inspire us to greatness. 
Thank God, God for fathers, for fathers who, who teach morality, morality and model, and model decency. decency. Thank God for fathers who lovingly convince boys to become men. Thank God for brave fathers who have the courage to resist being absent. Lord, on this Father's Day, may we encourage more men in our community to pick up the mantle of fatherhood. All right, I'm going to share my screen again and bring up the bulletin. And so I'm hoping that Jocelyn in her part of the Zoom world can see the opening prayer. And if she is able to, if you could unmute yourself, Jocelyn, and just lead us in the opening prayer. And we'll all say that in our own homes with you. All right, here's the opening prayer. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless the men among us that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's see if Dave is uh, back with us. Because <laughs> I, I, I can't do the hymn. <laughs> I can't do that without Dave. Let's see. Um, let's see. What shall we do? I guess we could skip the hymn. Um, all right. So going back, let's see. Yes, he's still having Zoom issues here. I have my guitar and the chords pull up for Lord of the Dance. Would you like me to play it? Absolutely, Keegan. All right. Looks like we still might get some music today. All right. I danced in the morning. Oh, wait, no. I'm sorry, I started a little early. Okay. <laughs> I danced in the morning when the world was young. I danced, danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. I found the end of my head, my bird. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, and he is a Ready to do the Father's Day recognition? Yes. All right. Okay. This is um, a poem that is dedicated to all the fathers out there. My superhero, my dad. 
My dad and I have special powers. I bet you didn't know. And when we are together, our superpowers grow. I have the gift of flight to soar and leap and bound. I can hover in the sky and never touch the ground. I am growing stronger too with each passing hour. I can even save the day with my special power. Dad's arms help me reach the things I cannot touch. His love and guidance carry me I look up to him so much. And even when I'm all grown up, I know that I'll be glad <laughs> that I had my own superhero, my best friend, my dad. All right, lots of tears over here. <laughs> all right, Dave is back. Hallelujah. All right, Jocelyn, you're up. All right. So Genesis, so, Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking, and she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation, also because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got away for him from Egypt. And that ends the reading. Right, now it's Callie's turn. Thanks, Callie. What shall we say then? Shall we go on shinning, so, sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have united, been, been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Matthew 10, 24, 24 through 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Bezebul, how much more the members of his household. 
So do not be afraid of them. So do not be afraid of them. For there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will that not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet no one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. The word of God for the people of God. And now we'll have a hymn, Jesus Loves Me, also chosen by the youth. Yes, I know he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Yes, I know he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know.
right. <clears throat> so now is the time where you get to share your God moments, your prayers of joy, and of course, your prayers of concern. So if you um, want to wave your hand, do a reaction, uh, some kind of indication. I see Dory, so we're going to call on you, Dory. All right. I wanted to start it off by saying what a joy it was when we were having technical difficulties for one of our youth on Sunday School Sunday to just pop in and fix it as all of we adults were like, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? And so uh, praise be. That's just amazing. Yes, thank you, Keegan. Um, I see that John Carlson has his hand waving. Yes, I want to thank, first of all, uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, number one. And number two, uh, your prayers are working. Uh, my cousin's wife, Carmen, is COVID-19 free. Praise God. Oh, that's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. We're looking for other people. Uh, it still looks like Pastor Kathy would like to lift up something. I would like to uh, thank the Lord that uh, Pastor Parker can be with us this morning. And uh, we welcome you. Uh, and I guess everything went very well from what I hear. So thank the Lord that uh, you are well. And it looks like uh, Pastor Parker would like to say. Um, I just got my audio two minutes ago. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, I was on the phone. Thank you, Pastor Kathy. And thank everybody in all of our congregations for your prayers. Uh, my medical procedure went very well. Um, I'm in the middle of recovery. And in a couple more days, I hope to be back to 100%. So Praise God, and uh, please keep me in your healing prayers. And Ruth, Ruth Strid, you wanted to say something? <laughs> well, I want to thank everybody who's been helping other people during this COVID-19, and for those who've been healed, <clears throat> and for those who are still having problems, whether with that or something else, may God take care of them and heal them. And Pastor Pruitt, thank you for being with us and I'm glad your procedure went well and we wish you the best every day. Shall we go to the people on the phones? Yeah, I got one. My, my foot's getting better. This is sure my foot's getting better. Slowly, but getting better. That's awesome, Jerry. Praise God. Anybody else offer, wanna offer up some prayers? I uh, have praise. Um, Maya Field um, completed her chemo yesterday. She's, she's been having chemo for breast cancer for a year now. Um, and she said that due to her numbers being very good, uh, she will not need to have radiation. Um, so praise God. You know, may she continue to heal as well. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm going to offer up a prayer. Uh, okay, go ahead, Keegan. I would just like to be grateful for the support of my family. I mean, I was not super confident jumping into Lord of the Dance, but when my when my family came around me and sang with me, it was really special and made all the stress fall away. So I was just, I, I'm so grateful that I have such a supportive family so that I can do something like that. Awesome. And I wanted to lift up Trisha Rosenfeld and her family. Um, two of our two of our students, um, two of our students, Katie and Eric, are not here with us today in part because they lost their grandfather. Trisha Rosenfeld lost her father-in-law recently, so um, it's a good time to just lift up prayers for anybody that is grieving a loss. And losses can be from years ago and we can still grieve. They can be months ago and still feel fresh. And of course, weeks and days ago. And there are a lot of people around us that are um, grieving. So I'd like Lord to hear that prayer for those grieving. Dory, go ahead. And I have 
praise today. Um, I'm not sure. I wasn't here last weekend, so I'm not sure if Ellen Garrity made it on, but she will be moving into a new apartment. Um, we will be moving her on July 1st, and then she will be released from Wingate on July 2nd. So it's, it's going to be after seven um, plus long months, um, but praise God, she is so excited. And she um, shared with me that she was so, so thankful for all of her church family who has continued um, to just support her even while she's been locked down basically in Wingate through cards and phone calls and, you know, whatever way um, different people have been doing it. So thank you. Thank you. Any other prayers? Again, you can wave your hand. Okay. All right, Pastor Kathy. Let us be in prayer. On Father's Day, we honor those people who have been teachers, confidants, and friends. We acknowledge that it is not biology that makes a parent, but love and attention. For those of us that have lost a father or a child, we hold their memories in our hearts. For all of us who are fathers, we ask for continued help in discerning how best to care for our children, whether they are five or 50 years old. May the strands of relationship between ourselves and all of creation grow ever stronger. May all of us, no matter what our place in the cycle of life, experience, nurture, and love and may we pass on that love to those we encounter on our own paths. May the father and mother of us all wrap the ill in healing arms, comfort the lonely, protect the vulnerable, nourish the hungry, give strength to our essential workers, and wisdom to us all as we go out into our neighborhoods. <clears throat> May the Lord bless our country and our world and hold us strong in our commitments towards justice. So may it be, amen. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so Carol. Um, I want to say to the Burbank, South Dover, and Pauline churches, thank you for letting us take part of the worship service today to recognize our Sunday school. Um, we always end our Sunday school year with Father's Day, and our tradition has been to turn over as much of the planning and leading students as possible. Uh, we got to the point where they led or chose or wrote everything from the prelude to the benediction except that the, the grown-ups gave out their awards. Um, we're doing a little less this year by necessity, and we're thankful to be able to meet like this, um, to do our part to listen to the medical experts and try to keep each other safe. Um, thank you. And um, Joanna and Wendy will tell you a little bit more about what their classes 
All right, now it is my turn. So I, um, I actually get to recognize the high school students. Um, and so just to give you a quick brief overview, our high school students meet all together once a month. And then in between, whoever comes, comes. And, and those lessons in between the high school meetings are always about something that Jesus has said, that something crazy Jesus has said, like um, turn the other cheek. So we talk about those things and we play games. But the once a month meetings with the high school students, uh, which do include some of the middle school students as well, are often a little bit more um, discussion based and thoughtful. And this year we used the a book uh, called Living Unafraid by Adam Hamilton. And we talked about fear. And we learned from Adam Hamilton in his mind, fear is an acronym, false events appearing real. Um, and so we also talked about the antidote to, to fear, which is also an acronym. Face your fears with faith. Examine in light of facts. Attack anxieties with action. And release your cares to God. So we did a number of different, you know, different activities related to those things and what those each meant. Um, and it certainly turned out to be a good year to talk about fear. Um, but I, I can't help but notice the interesting connection um, with fear in today's gospel reading. Um, I wasn't asked to plan a sermon today, um, but something happened yesterday that I just couldn't ignore. Um, Keegan was practicing for his reading, and he came to me a little alarmed um, by today's passage, particularly the end part where it says that Jesus did not come to create peace, but rather to bring a sword. And so I, I can't help but um, just add one more quick Sunday school lesson for my students before I lose them for the summer. And um, hopefully the rest of you will, will get something out of it as well. Um, in the first part of today's gospel reading, uh, Jesus is letting the disciples know that all the bad stuff that he is going to experience, they will also experience. Jesus knows it's not going to be fun. It's going to be a rough road of persecution and death. Um, course, cause for fear, certainly. Um, but he follows the reading that, that little bit with the next section um, about do not be afraid. And, and I'm sure you know this, that's hundreds of times that is written in the Bible, do not be afraid. But in this passage, Jesus goes into depth and he gives them three reasons not to fear all the bad things that they might be afraid of. And I think there's wisdom for all of us in this. The first reason he says not to fear is because the truth will come to light. The truth of who is good and who is bad will not remain hidden forever. The second reason we should not be afraid is because we don't need to fear death. Because death only destroys your body, not your soul. Now, this next part's a little tough to hear because Jesus reminds, <laughs> reminds us that we are all supposed to be afraid of God. We're not supposed to be afraid of death, but we are supposed to be afraid of God. The kind of fear that makes you listen, pray, and stay connected because God can destroy your soul and your body. I know that's not our favorite part, but he finishes with a third reason not to fear because through all the tough stuff, all the trials and hardships, God will be with you. Since he takes care of the sparrows, he will certainly take care of you. So I want to thank Callie and Jocelyn and Keegan and Abby who are here today for taking this journey with us this year um, in Sunday school and exploring fear. And I, and I hope you remember that when you get scared, turn to God. Don't let God, don't let fear rather guide your actions. Rather let God and love guide your actions. So um, again, if I could give them certificates, I would. Um, but you kind of heard their names. So Callie, Jocelyn, Keegan, and Abby, congratulations for getting through another year of Sunday school and thank you again. Now it's also my turn um, and my joy to recognize the graduates. We always do the graduation discussion on uh, the same day in our church. And since I teach the older students, I tend to be the person who gets to talk about the graduates. Um, graduation is an important moment it's kind of when we're encouraged to stop and reflect 
and think about how much we have accomplished. And that's an important thing to do. And if for a while it looked like we wouldn't have the same types of graduations, but I think in many ways, even though this hasn't been a normal year for graduation, many of us maybe have stopped and reflected even more than usual. And, and it is a true blessing to look back and say, wow, look at all I've accomplished. Look at this education I have been blessed to receive. And look at the people in my life that have supported me in this process. So we're going to just talk about uh, the different people that have graduated from different places. And so we have two college graduates to celebrate. Um, Dylan Bischoff, if you're out there somewhere, I know you're probably maybe with your mom. Uh, we're so proud of you for graduating from Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, Dylan got his bachelor's in game design and development. And uh, Luke, Luke Testa, congratulations. We're so proud of you. You've graduated from Dutchess Community College with an associate's degree in criminal justice. We also have three high school graduates to celebrate in our churches. Uh, Sierra Brown, she graduated from Arlington High School and she's moving on to SUNY Potsdam. Teshley Kamen graduated from Arlington and she's moving on to Fordham University, um, apparently in the pre-law program. And of course, Abby Lewick, who is here with us today, she graduated from Pauling High School and she's moving on to SUNY Geneseo. And if you were all with us, we were all together, we would be clapping after each of these people. There's also um, a couple of school transitions to celebrate. And school transitions are also important moments to reflect, look back and be proud. So we'd like to recognize Zane Edelman, who has graduated from Pauling Middle School and he's moving on to Pauling High School next year. And Natalia Kamen, she graduated from Unionvale Middle School and she's moving on to Arlington High School. And now I'd like to talk about a different type of graduation. And this is a graduation from a Sunday school program. As we all know, our churches tend to be shrinking and uh, this trend is even more um, seen in our Sunday school programs. Uh, those pictures that Carol Tang talked about on our walls, um, you know, the, the group used to be this big and then it became this big and then it became this big. Um, so it's important to stop and celebrate the people that do graduate from a high school or from a Sunday school program. And so we'll start with Sierra Brown. She is, she joined our Sunday school program a few years ago. And I'd like to just say what a calming um, and thoughtful presence she always was. Very serene. And it was a nice um, mix in the class because we had some people that were not so serene, namely my two children. Um, and our second graduate, uh, Abby Lewick, I, I'd like to talk to her about her for a minute um, or two because she's graduating from this program, but she started, you know, when she was, you know, two years old. So that's 15 years of Sunday school. Um, and our church does start awfully early at 9 a.m. So that's 15 years of getting up early, putting on clothes rather than hanging out in pajamas. Although these last few months, many of us have been able to do that. Um, throughout these 15 years, Abby has uh, had her mother for a teacher for many of those years, not all, thank goodness, but many of them. Um, and that can be tricky for a young girl to have her mother as her teacher. But for me, it has been an absolute joy and blessing. Abby has been always my most enthusiastic participant. She helps clean up when the lesson is over. She asks deep, insightful questions. And, and what's great is that Abby has taken her journey as a Christian very, very seriously. Um, she thinks about it constantly. She has um, asked many, many interesting questions. Here's one memorable one from her younger years. Um, if I forget to say amen after a prayer, is God still listening? Is it like forgetting to hang up the phone? Abby was amazed when we told her that God is always listening, so you don't even have to hang up. Abby has wondered and questioned and generously offered up her own insights all these years. She's helped lead others to come to church, to come to Sunday school. She's helped lead others to become closer to God. She has been a major recruiter for Midnight Run, 
and ASP, which means she's helping lead others to help others. My, her father and I could not be more proud of her, particularly in her efforts in church. And our church tradition has always been to buy our graduates a gift. This year, Sierra and Abby are getting bracelets that have the inscription in the inside. They're from Mint and Lily, if you know the brand. Um, Beautiful girl, you can do hard things. And believe it or not, the today's gospel lesson, lesson connects with that message. Even though I ordered these bracelets months ago, no, not months, weeks, but anyway, I ordered the bracelets a while ago. And, and so I found it fascinating that the gospel lesson connected. And it was the part of the gospel lesson that kind of upset Keegan the most. Um, in the end of the passage, after telling the disciples that they should not be afraid, he does remind them that what they're going to be asked to do is not easy. It's not going to be peaceful. Jesus was a revolutionary, not in the violent way, but his words and ideas shook up the status quo. Abby and Sierra, we love you and we support you because you have to go out there and do hard things. You have to go out there and shake up the world. You have to make the hard decisions because the world needed Jesus then and the world now needs you. So thank you very much for indulging that uh, recognition of our graduates. Now Wendy's gonna talk about the younger, school, younger class. Uh, my Sunday school class was pre-K through elementary. I had seven students who we mentioned before, but I'm gonna read them again. Levi, Oren, Mia, Madison, Abigail, Landon, and Ella. Ella was my little one, she was adorable. This year's attendance was irregular, hit or miss from September through January. Sometimes I had two, sometimes I had six. So this year we discussed the fruit of the spirit, one fruit every week, which made it easy if they didn't come, they got one or they got the other, but at least there was something new for them to learn. Then in December through January, we switched and learned about Advent, Christmas and Epiphany, which I do every year. So this way, every level gets to hear all, all about that. Um, we've had learning, we learned about praying and saying grace at dinner last year. So this year, we, we had emphasis on saying grace before our snack time in class. And to make it fun, I had a pink plastic squeezable chicken that squawked. And any student who volunteered to stand to say grace for our snack got to squeeze the chicken. So needless to say, I often had several volunteers and we said grace several times in class, which was great. So to end the year, my assignment to them was to have their parents help them and record themselves either praying or leading their family in grace at dinner time. And unfortunately, I only received one video, but I understand because there's a lot of whole homeschooling going on now and a lot of stuff keeping the parents busy. So here's my adorable student Landon saying a prayer. And you have to ex please excuse the marker all over him because his father said he got hold of a Sharpie marker. And um, I understand that because my daughter Haley did the same thing. She got a red Sharpie marker the day before we were supposed to have a visit from, in her adoption, we were having visits from social services. So the day before her face was covered with red Sharpie marker. But thank God for handy wipes because they come right off. So anyway, let's roll the video. Dave, if we're ready. Okay. Good night, God. Good night, God. Good night, dear God. Now I must sleep. Good night, dear God. Now I must sleep. I'll close my eyes. I'll, and cl I'll close my eyes. And slumber deep. And slumber deep. I know you watch me from above. I know you walk me from above. And cover me with your sweet love. And cover me with your sweet love. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> he's my fave. Anyway, I'm hoping September rolls around. We'll be able to get together again. And I miss them a lot. Thank you. It is now time in our service where I explain how important your offerings are, 
even in this time where our buildings are closed, the money still goes to these, all of these ministries that we are running, keeping, you know, electricity and lights and, and uh, especially the fans today. Thank you for the fans. Um, so you can mail your offering into the church offices. I know Polkwig has a way of um, doing online offering. And please keep that in mind that though the buildings are closed, your church is open. Join me in the offertory prayer. Wondrous God of the universe, who finds time to whisper your love to us, we come to your altar with grateful hearts. When you speak your love into our quiet moments, it is the most precious gift of all. It is not a gift for us to hold and hide, but to proclaim from the housetops. May the gifts we offer to you proclaim your love loudly to a world that often feels forgotten. We pray this in the name of your son, our savior and redeemer. Amen. Now we will sing Amazing Grace, hymn number 378, if you have your United Methodist hymnal.
Remember this, God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. Just as the Father has compassion on his children, so God has compassion on those who fear him, who listen to his voice and who do his will. Go out in the knowledge that the everlasting love of God goes with you. Amen. All right, so now we are gonna unmute you all so that you can say hello to people in whichever way makes you happy. <laughs> You can also mute yourselves back again if you'd like, but we are, we have unmuted you. Awesome job, Deegan. Did you yeah, hear that? Yeah, great Deegan? stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> great, great stuff. Awesome job by all of you kids today. Happy Father's Day. Yes. Happy Father's Day. Hi, Luke. How are you doing, Carmen? 